All right, Big Jesse James from Playboy Gangster on the Care Max show. Finna do a little something. For the dime moves in the lokes, for the six foes on spokes, on. for the OGs that did a dime, came back around on parole, for the homegirls with the scrap game, little homies that game bang, from Pelican Bay to YA, rearrange your mind frame. Yeah, I know what you've been through. Uh. Shit, you had to go tend to. Your mama gave birth on the turf. I know them killers you kin to. This for the lost generation, broke as hell, man. Yo, lifting weights and I was on sport, they start calling me Big Miz. Original Stutterbox, Eastside Five, who's Pablo Bishop, Mid City Gangster Bloods. This is the beginning. Do you know your family's origins? Yeah, my family from New Orleans. Yeah, the Feet Project. <laughs> Yeah, 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 Mark, you know the project, man, you know, New Orleans, uh, where they had to fight every, 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 every day, you know, and she taught, she taught me a lot, man, my mama taught me how to love, she taught me how to fight, and she taught me about God, them the three things that made me survive, and uh, to be honest on me, she taught me a lot, uh, not about this, this culture that I was in, you know, and prepared me, you know, one fight, all fight, the, you know what I mean, the, all, all that, you know what I mean, the, you know, how to, conduct myself as far as in the streets, you know. She was the fighter. She was the one who her bigger brothers and sisters would go, cause she was just the fighter, you know what I mean? And that's what I ended up taking after that. You know, my pops from Texas, they met up out here in uh, 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 Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, we talking about the businessmen that, and all that, all, all them uh, groups back then, Slauson boys and all that around that time. So they hooked up. Had my crazy ass. They landed in, in Los Angeles in, in like, like 59, 58, 59. What, Pop 58, her 59. When you were born? I was born in 1962. Like a lot of us, we landed in the 20s. You know, we was all born in the 20s. Me, little Jess, you know, went to Vermont Street uh, uh, Elementary and all that. And then the, the, the trend back there was once you move from the 20s, when you move up, it was like moving to the 30s. So we went to the 30s. And that's when, uh, that's when I started learning. I, I clicked more in the 30s, you know, probably it's obvious by now why, but you know, I went to school with Cadillac Jim, Cato, and all them, them hitters, Baby, baby Boy, and all them hitters from, uh, from uh, Harlem. You know, they was like my schoolmates, and my homeboy, uh, my homeboy from Marvin, Big Wicked. What did, what did moms and pops do for a living when they came from the south to uh, L.A.? Oh, pop, pops lived from uh, work for, for General Motors, like a, young, a lot of young black men. You know, that was like a good job. You know, that's when we had uh, blacks starting to get into the culture of uh, having jobs and buying homes and things like that. So when we got in the 30s, that's what happened. We was living in an apartment, and then we, went, we moved to the 30s. We had bought a house. Pops had bought a house. Yeah, for sure. And, 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 and he worked at General Motors. Moms didn't work. Yeah. And uh, where'd you guys move to after the 30s? We moved to West LA. We moved to a street called Sherborne uh, in West LA. I moved, I moved there, uh, me and my uh, 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 sister moved there first. My brother stayed with moms for a minute and then she moved over there. So then, you know, we was all together again, you know, so. What was that about being homeowners in the 30s to apartments in West LA? It's called Black Dysfunctional Family. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's called break it up, ain't easy. <laughs> you know, yeah. What, what, what was the different landscape from the 30s to West LA? Was there a the 30s? Difference? 30s is not really considered deep South Central, but it is. The attitude, the way they, the way they, the way they conduct themselves, and things like that. You had hard hitters over there, like Dennis Johnson, uh, uh, TQ. Uh, James Miller, you had them dudes. I grew up with dogs, you know, looking at these dudes, man. These dudes was straight Crips, you know what I mean? That, that was my first experience with Crips, you know, taking the leather jackets, Robert Bulu getting killed up, Palladium, all that. You know, we start seeing a lot of that. Oh, so you, you stayed in, the, in, basically, you stayed in the 30s throughout the 1960s then? Oh, yeah. So what yeah, I moved, to, I moved to West L.A. in 75. Uh -huh. We did one year in Texas. We went out there. I was I was so glad to come back to LA. I almost kissed the ground. But then I went to uh, Pastor Junior High, which is a real, it was a real popular school in West LA back then. Everybody went there. The Marvins went there. The Gear Gang. Everybody went there. But at this time, they're they're not in existence yet, right? Well, it's no gangs on the West LA. The only gang 
that started early in the West LA with Stanley Boys. That's my big homie. I call him my big homie, Kevin Gold. So let's, let's rewind. When you, when you moved to West LA on Sherborne in 1975, describe the neighborhood. The neighborhood was like a good to do neighborhood. The neighborhood was, we still, what people really don't realize, I could walk to Beverly Hills from my hood. You know, it was around Chevy Hills. There was money over there. It was white folks over there. They still had Beverly Hills signs up. So that's why it was later, and I don't want to go to later like that, but it is important to what we're talking about now. That's why they put that gang injunction on us back in the day, which was illegal, and they had to take it off. Because we was too close to money. We was too close to, to, to Beverly Hills and Chevy Hills and, and all that over there. Culver City and all that. So it, was, it wasn't no gang over there at all. It was just a lot of people who, who, who grew up in other neighborhoods who ended up having enough money to move over there. So today they call that area La Cienega Heights. Yeah, La Cienega. What, what, what did you guys call it back then in 1975? The uh, just <laughs> La Cienega Cadillac. <laughs> we didn't have that. They just put them signs weren't even up then. You know what I mean? So yeah, but they called it West LA. You know they call, but not with the emphasis. You know that they have now. You know what I mean? Just like didn't nobody call South Central South Central. They just called that the West Side back in the day. So. You know, so that was like West, like. So explain, explain the racial makeup in 1975 of the La Cienega Cadillac oh, neighborhood. A whole body, a whole bunch of influx of blacks, but they have whites still there. And like in the upper streets going towards Robertson, which is right before you get to Beverly Hills, that was all white. It was like two, three, four streets that was white and then some was mixed, so it was just a lot of influence. It's like when I went to high school, when I went to Hamilton High School, that was a predominantly white school. And we're talking about 78, 79. So, you know, if you look in the yearbook, you'll see a whole bunch of white kids and you see a few black kids, you know what I mean, so. But as far as in the, the apartment areas where you guys live that corny, Cadillac and all that, what uh -huh. the racial makeup of those apartments? Oh, not those, not, that's far, you know, that's over going back toward La Cienica. So that's where all, where all we was. We were moving in from, from cause that's coming from the east. So we're moving in, you know, going, went, it started in, 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 on the east side, going re, really to, to 20s. And when it got on the west side, we're going through Midtown. You know what I mean? And we so it's, it's moving towards the beach. Like people say, they, they start moving to the beach. Now they're moving back. <laughs> well, why, why do you think blacks move into that little pocket right there where they, what were they doing for a living to move right there? Were they maids and for the rich white people in Beverly Hills, and that's where they were? No, they had they had jobs similar to my dad. You know, the ones that had an open door. Because you got to remember, this is like the beginning of the seventies. This is the end of the, the, the sixties when there was a lot of turmoil, a lot of fighting. You know what I mean? So it still was racism and oppression. So you know wherever they could find a job, but it wasn't really like it wasn't no maids and servants and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So you know, and then later, of course, you know programs like uh, 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 housing programs and stuff like that. You know they accepted that all over there. So since there wasn't no gangs in that area in 1975, what, what, what were you guys doing over there as teenagers and kids? What was the thing to do over there before the gangs formed? Well, I don't know a lot. A lot of people know about this part of the history, but the West West LA was 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 flooded with with, with gang with, with not gangs but dance groups. That, that, that danced against each other. It was like gangbanging. It took over fighting. Like when I went to pastor, you know, when you see somebody in the, in the, in the crowd, it's a fight. Somebody yell fight and everybody run over there. But then when the, when the dancing came, when the locking came and then the pop locking came, y'all y'all want me to do that too right now? I can get out, man. I ain't playing with y'all. <laughs> I think we gonna do a little bit out on the promo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so and we it took over to where now it's a dance off, like a lock off or a pop off. You know what I mean? So and then so you know a lot of people got into it, man. I mean, really, I I got into it. I got into it deep. You know what I mean? That that was like my life. That's what I thought I was gonna do when I grew up. You know what I mean? It was that deep. What were the name of some of these pop locking groups? Glad you asked that. We had the Starlight, which was Black P Stones. You know, you had the you had the Diamondbacks. You had the Playboy Gangster, I mean, uh, <laughs> Playboy, Playboy Dancers. You had the, uh, um, you had the Moon Lighters. You know, you had the Red Lighters. You had the Disco Lockers, and and 
we I'm forgetting some of them, but we had a whole bunch of them, man. A whole and bunch. And they were all based at pa pasture, or they were from different areas? All over West LA, going all the way from the jungle, all the way to 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 uh, over there by West LA. You, you thought the jungle was in West LA back then? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm talking about the dancing, though. Right. Yeah, the dancing. But here's the thing, bro. Even though we was dancing against each other, we ended up being from the same hoods, some of us. Like Marvin and Playboy. Me, Marvin and Playboy used to dance against each other. <laughs> what, what, what was the name of the dancing group in, in Marvin? The di dis lo disco Lockers. They had Diamondbacks over there. You know, uh, Red Lights over there. They they had different dance groups. We we you know we danced against. And some of them is like my closest homies now. The Moonlighters and the Playboy Dancers, we're the same neighborhood cub where you were saying from Bedford and Coin. That was all of us. It's just the Moonlighters were a little bit older and the Playboy Gangsters, I mean, our dancers was younger. So you had Tracy Jackson, you had uh, Big G Dog, you know, you had Don Juan, which was Cotton Ball back there. You had Chuko, which was a. Uh, 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 cancer, you know, you had Kiki and them dudes, and they, they, one thing about Tracy Jackson, Chase, Tracy Jackson was a young dude, but he was a, he was a, he, he was very creative, you know, even just coming up with that name like that, he was very creative, and they had a, a thing called a Playboy line, where, uh, you didn't even have to practice the, the step, it's just the dude, the guy in front of you would, would, would do a move, and then the next guy would do that same move, and then it'll go down to the end of the line, then it'll start over. So just having that type of ability back then, you know, it's like leadership ability. And he's the one who really was the, was the foremost person for the Playboy dancers. So, so when, you, when you landed in the, the Corn and Cadillac area in 1975, were these groups already up and running? Or no, they, they, they no, formed on your watch? No, they came around the music time as far as the change in the music. You know, uh, when, when it went more to cameo and stuff like that instead of parliament, you know, around those years, about around the 77, 78 time, first you had camel locking, which was early 70s. That was Don Campbell, and that, you know, that was this here, you know what I'm saying? And that was my thing. That's what I was real good at, you know. And like they were bringing it. Bringing up before, I almost got the part of rerun. So you know, you yeah, what's, what's up with rerun? What, but, what, does he, what does he got to do with, with Playboy history? Well, the thing is, I had a homeboy named Conado, and Conado lived on Corny, right? It was a different part of Corny, and uh, his mom worked for ABC Studio, and she was a talent, a talent scout, and so he told uh, his mom about my my my, my homeboy, my loved one, which really it ended up being my crimey from Playboy Gangster. But back then, we was just we're, we were doing a lot of stealing too. Let's talk about that. <laughs> let, 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 me, let, let, me, let me rewind a little bit for some of the, the, the younger crowd that might not that, know who Rerun is. Yeah. Explain to us who Rerun is. Rerun was, was the fat guy on What's Happening. Rerun, Rerun was, the, was the guy with the beanie always jumping around. Uh, he was a famous locker on Saturday Night Live and he would dance with a group called The Lockers. And so before he even got that spot, she, they were interviewing my homeboy. My homeboy really wasn't into the dance like I was. And she wasn't really uh, happy with what with, with, with she was seeing, what he was doing. But he suggested me. So when she came and in, in, she kind of did the little interview right in my living room, right? So I'm, like, I'm in the ninth grade, right? But I, I nailed it. I mean, I was in. I nailed it. So I'm bragging all night. Teasing my sister, yeah, I'm going to be on TV, right? <laughs> I got the part because she told me I had the part. But then she called me in the morning and said, how old are you? I knew something was wrong. She said, Dad, but I was too young, bro. So he ended up, he should have got it anyway. He was better at it. Did, well, did, did better acting, but I, I can get him in this here, though. Did Rerun live in the neighborhood? No, uh-uh. Rerun's from the east side. The Lockers was from the east side. Well, what area did they film uh, what's happening at? Do you know what they yeah, were? I was like Watts. Watts. Yeah. yeah and, 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 and when I was saying about the dancing, I was saying about the ones we were familiar with, from the Black Stone, from the Stones to the Jungles to, to West L.A. That was the ones we saw. But it was all over the East Side and South Central. You know what I mean? So, you know, just like nothing but truck, now they're a gang. Right, right. Yeah. Everything evolves. It evolves. And, and I tell people all that all the time, you know, watch the type of click you in, you know, be, be, because that could turn into something. Because if one, if one dude, see, that's what happened with a lot of beats we had. Like, you might be dancing, and dude might get in your face too, too, too much, or talking a little bit too much, and then you might push him. 
and then it's a fight, and then something else after that. So were you an official member of Playboy Dancers? Never. So what was the name of your group? Oh, Westside Pop Lock. Westside Pop Lock? Yeah. That was me, Kenny Raymond, and uh, my homeboy Jake, and my homeboy Kevin Adams. We was the Westside Pop Lock. Were you guys rivals to the Playboy Dancers? No. Because, to be honest, when it came to me and Kenny, nobody could get us. So, <laughs> so, so you, they was a little bit younger than us, though. But Tracy was good. I danced against Tracy before. He was he. We 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 went at we went at it. Butchers was flying. It. So what's the, what's the what's the origin of, of, of Playboy dancers? Where did they get that name from? Well, actually, Playboy, Playboy, and then just we're dancers. So you, so you you mentioned Kenny Raymond. Uh huh. I came across an article on this guy. Uh -huh. In the article, he claimed to be an original Playboy dancer. His date was 1972, and he claimed, uh -huh. he claimed to be the, the leader of, uh, uh -huh. of the Playboys. Yeah, I saw that article when I was in the pants. <laughs> tell, tell me about Kenny. Who is he and what was Kenny, his position in Playboy? First of all, let me say this. There's no leader to PBG, not even me. But all of them call me Big Homie, so that should tell you something. As far as him being the leader, you know, but as far as my love for Kenny Raymond, I got mad love for Kenny Raymond. I mean, I mean, you know, he taught me how to fight. He taught me all kinds of stuff. Kenny, Kenny Raymond was a was a was a third degree black belt when we was little kids. He used to whoop some ass, and for some reason, he used to like to wrestle with me. I don't know because I was an easy mark until I got older, and the Jesse James thing came, and then it was a different story. But. Other than that, that, that cat that cat right there taught me a lot. He was a gangster nigga. He wore he wore this he's the only guy, person I've seen on earth that wore a godfather hat and a kung fu gi. There was a pop lock era going on in West LA. Uh-huh. When did you when, when did the Crips presence enter your neighborhood? When we started Playboy Gangster. Because we were Playboy Gangster Crips. See that was the difference. Crip is the difference. But you got all these different pop lock groups, right? So, uh-huh. So then, so how, how, how did he evolve from pop? Because then you got and who, Mark and who, who interjected Crippin into that scene to make you guys leave pop locking alone and then go this route into Crippin? The Playboy Gangster, me, Don Juan, and Pirate. That we 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 started claiming Crip, and I might as well say this too: when we first started Crip, you know, it, we had to fight some streets in our own neighborhood because people didn't want to be Crips; they didn't want a gang over there. So we, we fought different gangs, you know, like Bedford and all that. You know, it wasn't no uh, uh, trying to stab nobody. You're talking about family. It's like a family feud. Like you got Kenny Raymond over here fighting his brother, Greg Raymond. You know, it, 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 was, like, it was like just rough them up type of stuff. So, so what year pop locking in and what year did the gang banging start? Around 1980, when it finally just, uh, it, you know, it really didn't have a definite line in it. It just, it just morphed into it. You know what I mean? Because people were still, still, some people were still dancing. I was still dancing, right? But I was getting older, and it was playing out. So it just played into the gang when the gang thing came. It just took it over. You so, know. So let me ask you this: So, so at Pastor Junior High, we're pop locking, and by the time we get to Hamilton, we're Hamilton High or Crippen? Is that how it went? Yeah, it was more like that, yeah. There wasn't no older Crips in the neighborhood at the time? Yeah, Kevin Gall, one of the most famous West Side Crips ever. But he was in the pen when I started to set. So how did he become part of the whole PBG movement if he was gone? Because that's how it is. Like, I had a lot of homies in Y that when we started playing board games, like my homie being insane, you know, he was a monster. I mean, really, like somebody that you be glad that that's your homeboy because you don't want to fight him. He was that dude. <laughs> he was my hero, but my little homie. <laughs> so he was in YA when we started the set. But if you were already in, if you already walking around and breaking bread with these dudes every day, if they start a gang, you automatically from it. Just like if I go to uh, the pen and I tell some uh, enemy set I live on Bedford, what do you think they're going to do? You know what I'm saying? I'm from Bedford. I grew up on Bedford. <laughs> that means I'm from PBG. So look, I got, I got an older homie that passed away. His name is Steel Bill. And, uh -huh. and he uh, he threw some names at me as far as who was originally Crippin in West L.A. Mm -hmm. back in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. 
names. Uh -huh. I want to know if you know these names. And okay. If you can draw them. Uh, Daryl Foster. Yeah, that's the home. Daryl Foster. Can you tell me he was him? Yeah, he was just... You had cats over there, and and, 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 and excuse me for this, because I kind of uh, skipped over, and that's when I said we used to steal. I should have went into it then. Because you had people that was with the business as far as the street life, but that what we wasn't we just wasn't gangbanging. So Daryl Foster was one of them. Daryl Foster was one of the cats that that, that that struck fear in people and stuff like that. You know what I mean? He could fight, he could steal, you know, he rob, he do his thing, you know. And 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 so we had a lot of cats like that, like Mac Man, you know what I mean? So I don't know if still Bill Rick mentioned him. So 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 what what set with or gang would you would you label Daryl Foster back then? I don't even really know if he would even like to be labeled a Playboy gangster because you know we, you know, Dur Dur was before then, so it's kind of like we were younger than him. You know what I mean? So, uh, but I would have to say if somebody knew where he who he knew and and who, who was around every day, then he would definitely be considered a Playboy gangster. Rodney Wells. Rodney Wells. Yep. That's, that's 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 a big homie right there for me. See, I hung in the hood before a lot of the homies. All most of my homies are younger than me, so I was raised by these dudes. So Rodney, Doug, and all these dudes. I don't know if Doug's on that picture, but I mean on, on the paper, Adam Williams, them dudes. They they you know they had swag. They 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 was out there doing their thing, you know. So would it be safe to say Kevin Golf and Daryl Foster and, and Ray Kevin Golf are, are are your crip influence? They're they're around Kevin Golf's age, but here's the difference between get Kevin Golf and the people we talked about. Kevin Golf was a West Side crip. He started a, a set called Stanley Boy. It didn't take off, but he's known throughout the jailhouse and for, and even Kevin. No, he he's he's known. Like a monster, or not that, not big as monster, because the only one really big, known as most big monsters, it took, you know what I mean? So, 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 just a main hitter, you know, like a cute or somebody, somebody that's known, his name wrong, uh, through the crypt, through cryptum, as we call it. So, so basically, the, the young pop pop lockers came together and started PBG, and these old crypts just came home from the pen or YA and joined the movement because it was there. Now it's something to claim. Now it's something to be about. You know what I mean? And that's the culture. We there. We strong. Like like you would get into it back before they got with us, before they really allowed us to really do our thing, or uh, let's say accepted us. They would be like, "Don't mess with that nigga," because then it's a million little niggas finna come over here. You know what I'm saying? It was like that. Like I got into it one time, and one of the older dudes was like, "Man, leave that dude alone because he's gonna go over there, and all these dudes is gonna come back." So. You know, it was just the shift in power, that's all. So, so was there ever a, a Godfather Crip presence in West LA when you was growing yes, up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And who, and who they, were they? They, they were the Marvins. That was all the Marvins. Yeah, that, that, that's who they were. And, and so. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't label Kevin, Daryl, and Rodney as Godfathers? I, don't, I, I never knew if they were affiliated with, with yeah. Godfather. Uh, I never heard that, you know, as far specifically, you know, but. Uh, yeah, God, God. See, I was very familiar for the, for, with the Godfathers because, because I grew up on, on Harlem. In fact, some of them right now still tell these young dudes, "Oh, yeah, he from Harlem. He's the real." No, I'm not. I never banged it. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't like claiming that I, I really haven't banged. But Big Bob, you know, my boy, he, he swear it down. <laughs> okay, so now let, let, let's get to the the, the, the phase where the pop locking's ending and you guys turn. Playboy gangsters. Uh -huh. What's the story behind that? The story was uh, a lot of hanging out, a lot of dysfunctional kids drinking, angry black men like uh, like Ice Cube said, <laughs> pissed off black human beings, you know, just venting and, 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 and you know, until war happened, you know what I mean? And then when war happened, then that's when things got to tighten up. So, so I always you, like wartime. Not me. because I'm attacking people, but because, but because it's more unity. Give us a roll call of the, of the original PBGs that were there when it formed, the first wave. Pirate, Don Juan, Droopy, Scooby. Now they were, I'm not saying, I, you know, a lot of people like to say who was day one, right? Who really knows who was there the first day? Just I know I was there. I know who came on the block with me, but I don't remember who, who he, he may have had 
over there. You know, I don't in my memory, I'm 59 years old. I can't remember all that crap. It, it wasn't like no meeting, like, okay, play the yeah. dancer. Yeah, and, we, and, and yeah, other pop yeah we were going to meet up on Basically, basically it was Juan telling me, hey, man, these little dudes, because we were talking about starting some of these, these little dudes being Corning Alley. So we went over there. That's the first day I met Pirate. You know what I mean? I was like, hey, yo, okay, you know, they out here pop locking gangsters, right? And so I was like, we finna start a set and we, and we finna be Crips. And if, if you don't if, if you don't wanna be a Crip, then leave that then leave the alley. And, and so I think only two people left. Based off the name alone, leads me to believe the Playboy dancers had the most influence on, on the situation. Uh I wouldn't say that because the guy who put all that together wasn't from Playboy Gangster. So, but y'all took the Playboy dancer's name. It was a beautiful name. Remember the Playboy hats with the uh -huh. style and everybody would yeah. the Playboy yeah, it, and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Did that have anything to do with what was going on during that time? That, that was a, that, that, they were already doing that with the Playboy dancers. So, in the, and you know, really, to be honest, bro, I can't really say, I can say I wasn't a Playboy dancer. Like, I didn't go out with them and dance against people, you know what I mean? So, or or even fight, because they fought too, you know, and stuff. So I wasn't active with them like that. But I can't say that them wasn't my homeboys, because they was, I grew up with them. That's why I say it's more like a family, you know, because Don Juan was a Playboy dancer, Chuka was a Playboy dancer. Them is G's right there, don't get no G in that. So, but, but at the same time, I, I personally wasn't in the original group. Well, what's, what's the origin of your name? Where'd that come from? That, I used to get in trouble about this because that came from my dad. <laughs> he didn't like that. He didn't like gang banging. He didn't like me being called Jesse James because it was some people in our family that, that we grew up with, some people from New Orleans. We, get, we got real close to them. And uh, 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 one day, I think it was some noise in the backyard and it ended up being a dog. And he shot at the garage, and the old lady was like kind of clowning him, called oh, Jesse James. And I heard that when I was young. So when I started game banging, I was like, I'm gonna use that name. What was your pop locking name? I see, man, I don't even want to go there with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was real, dog. No? <laughs> <laughs> you set the nigga up, man. <laughs> that nigga stole my part, so I stole his name. <laughs> so rewind. You was talking about when, when you when, when you guys went from pop lock into the, to the cribbing. You spoke on war. Uh huh. Who were you guys born with? In 1980. Schoolyard Crip. Right off the gate. Not right off the gate. It was a... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, it didn't end up being a major war. Okay, yeah, let me go on and say that. Yeah. The first person we ever fought was the 107 Hoovers. And you're going to say, how did that happen? <laughs> They had my homeboy, he's like my brother. I, I call I can go stay over his mama house right now, but right next from 107, his auntie lived over there. And they came over there, right, and seen some dudes with the radios. And here's where it clicks in again to what I was saying. I can't say I wasn't a Playboy dancer, but those are my homeboys. It's because they seen them at the uh the mall. We had a little mall. You I don't know if you ever been over there, it's a little shopping mall, a strip mall type of thing with Montgomery Wars. And they jacked uh, the homies, for, uh, I think with Don Juan, took his radio, right? And, 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 and that was the first fight we had. Is this pre-Playboy Gangsters? No, this was Playboy Gangsters. Because people try to question me about that, and they go, well, you know, when they say Playboy Dancers. See, Don Juan came and got me. So that means we was already Playboy Gangsters. Cause he wouldn't have came and got me if I was a Playboy dancer, or if they were already Playboy dancers. So yeah, he came and got me, you know. And, and so what happened? We ran down there, man. Now, now you want me to tell one of my superhero stories? Yeah. <laughs> Look here. So we ran down there, and they was on guard for another street in the hood, and it was about it was about five or six of them. And uh, and then you know I'm already pumped up because my homeboy didn't woke me up. He all swole. So we running down there, you know what I'm saying? So I'm pumped up, so I see him. I'm like, cuz, what's happening with that Playboy gangster, nigga? You know? And then they was like, oh, it's Hoover. It's Hoover. I said, nigga, head up fade. Hey, hey, hey. One at a time, head up fade, right now. They didn't even call it fade. So, you know, but that was the first time we really had a fight, though. Yeah. 
So we we'll chalk that up as a skirmish. Well, that, yeah, yeah, and that's really the first time I've tapped into that type of anger where you're getting a little bit too mad. But that and the grace of God, first of all, the grace of God is, is, is what protected me. People talk about my stories, jumping off of tears, getting stabbed in the face and, and you know, all that, stabbing police. They talk about that stuff, but they don't realize that that it just wasn't meant for me to die. It wasn't that bad. In this age, for the old timers in the project playing OJ. Ride for my sections with weapons, I can't control it. I'm sober like a soldier, never loaded. Hold up, I keep it gangsta, gangsta, hey, love. Twisting my finger.